If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio. Okay, that's the same guy on the right hand side. Now, this was the most famous model in the world, okay? The highest paid model in the world, David Gandhi. You could, cl you could p plausibly say that this man was his brother once he lost the body fat. Look at that. You could plausibly say that this man is his brother. That is absolutely crazy to me. That you can go from looking like that to potentially looking like the world's most famous attractive model. Just from losing body fat. Look at that. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be talking about low body fat percentages for men and the absolute difference that it can make to your facial appearance, okay? So everybody always thinks when they lose body fat that it's going to be their body that benefits most. Well, low body fat has an immense effect on a man's face and facial attraction. I'm going to show you guys some images later. I'm going to go through them. They will astound you. And I'll break them down with my orthotropics knowledge and show you the angles and where they cut. But just a quick little piece on this. In multiple studies, they found that women preferred men with more masculine features uh, to do in their face when it came to finding a sexual partner. And when it came to relationships, it was kind of down the middle. But they certainly found the guys with more masculine features more attractive which was a big indicator that they'd rather be with that individual, okay? But if you're just looking for female attention, trying to attract women, low body fat percentage, something below 12 is 12% 12 body fat, it's fantastic. Anything below 10 is an absolute game changer. You'll see the difference immediately. And they found that women preferred faces that had, because traditionally men are more muscular and they have less body fat than women. So the faces that showed that, you know, because you're not always walking around with your top off, the faces that showed that and showed that the overall, because here's how muscle works, okay? When you put muscle on, there is an equal distribution around the body. And if you get in the gym and you put muscle on your body, it will add muscle to your face and it will pack it out. That's why people who hit, lift weights, they look as though... They look as though their heads have grown as well, that their faces have grown. Otherwise, you know, I, I don't know why this happens, but it's... A reaction from the body because otherwise it's going to look silly isn't it imagine if you've got these tiny little heads tiny little neck but the rest of your body gets jacked you know so your body starts to distribute muscle around the body to compensate for that happening and you add more muscle to your face which makes you more attractive and then if you peel away the fat you know which like i said women prefer because men traditionally have lower body fat than women so it's seen as a evolutionary signal for healthiness and that's, that's all attraction is at the other day, at end of the day is health. But as soon as you add that extra muscle and then peel off that layer, you're going to get increased angles around your face. You know, this might get more packed out. This might become slightly more packed out so that when you lose the body fat and that dips in, everything cuts in at better angles. Now, in order to explain this and to emphasize the importance of low body fat, I'm going to take you over to the screen. I'm going to take you through a couple of images. You guys are going to enjoy it. And... Um, it's, it's great because it's something that I'm doing currently at the moment. My my own personal bulk ends on Sunday. This is going to be the final week that I'm going to do. That's when everything that I bought, all my supplements, etc., they kind of run out. <clears throat> and instead of buying more and going through another bulk, I just I feel pretty unhealthy right now. I feel quite padded around my face. Like my nose is even getting thicker that way because, you know, even like here, around here, I've been doing like taking smaller bites. I've been doing the orthotropic swallowing technique to hollow these out and I can feel them getting more hollow and I can feel from the facial exercises and the neck exercises and the submental exercises that I do around here, I can feel my face getting more chiseled. Like if I grab it, I can really feel that it's more chiseled and I think my jawline's actually far superior than it was when I started bulking and I can feel cheekbone angles here. But every time I improve it, Every month or so, I add a percentage of body fat, so it adds more padding to my face. And that's why I'm ex extremely excited to do this video, because I'm thinking to myself, well, I can revert back to it in the future, let's say by something maybe like August or maybe even next year, because I'm doing a video on this soon about how to actually lose body fat properly. But 
if I lose a percentage per month or maybe a percentage every two months, take it steady and retain the muscle. It's going to be nice to see what is underneath here and how many angles I can reveal and how chiseled I can make this and I can show how everything can come together if you pull all these different pieces in at one time and then reveal it at the end. It's going to be very exciting to see. But yeah, every time I keep doing exercises like on my jaw and my face, whatever, and then I add a percentage, it's kind of like a yo-yo effect where they're pushing against each other and there's improvement, but the padding, the extra padding doesn't allow me to show that extra improvement. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Now to see perfect examples of that, we're going to head over to the screen. We're going to look at, I think, four or five images. You guys are going to be blown away. Okay, guys, we've moved over to this image here. And I promise you this is the same guy, I can tell. I usually can tell by the ears, but here I can tell by the shape of the lips, the shape of the nose. You know, we can especially see here on the point of the nose the way that this is the exact same shape. It's just it has an extra layer or two of padding. That's what makes the difference. But this guy's before and after picture is fantastic, okay? You look at this guy. He's got great eyes. He's got great brow. He's got pretty high cheekbones here he's got a decent enough jawline he's got great angles he's got a fantastic chin like i said earlier lips are good his nose is fantastic he's got plenty of angles like here for example where it goes in a lot of people might not think that's good but it is because it creates angles on the face and angles on the face create symmetry they create attractiveness definition that's what he has here but if you look at his nose here, yes, he still has that dip, but it's padded and we can't see it. So it ends up just looking a little bit piggy. <laughs> That's not offensive, but like a piggy nose. And look, if I reveal this, you can see the difference here, okay? It's clearly the same nose. It's just here it looks a little bit longer and more defined. And the angles here around the nostrils are far superior than here that looks like a short one because of the extra padding that is forcing this nose to be connected to the brow bone. Okay? He doesn't have that here. There's so many different angles. If we look here, look at this uh, cheekbone here. He's got a clear cheekbone and a clear definition going down here. We can see it better here. It goes down, it connects to the chin. He's got a pretty good chin here. It's a great angle. So we've got these angles going on, okay? Look at this. That is apparently his cheekbone. I, now, I would look at this guy and I'd say his cheekbones aren't bad. I would say they're average, okay? I would then look at this guy's cheekbones and I would say he's got great cheekbones, really defined. He's got the hollow cheeks here. You can see he's got the slight dips, and that's from low body fat. Here, padded, that's a large buccinator muscle, okay? And then the cheekbones here, like I said, they're padded again. You can't really see anything. There's clearly no line going down here, okay, and connecting to the chin. And the difference in the chin is astounding. If we draw a line around here, around the bottom of the chin, and connect it around, it's pretty much a loop, okay? It's like a semicircle. Now if we try it on this side, we go down, we come directly across, we come across again at another angle, we come straight up here, and then we come up again. Look at the difference in those two lines. I know I've used a, a thick tool here, so it's kind of, you know, if I did a, a thinner pencil line, it would definitely be superior. But if we just look at these two shapes, they're completely different. It's the same man, but it's completely different due to the low body fat. And one zone that's that always sticks out for me is what I like to call the kind of mush zone. Now you've got the cheekbone here and you've got the nose bone. And in between this kind of area, and same with the brow, but in between this kind of area here, a lot of people have what I like to call the mush zone, which is it just all connects together. Okay, there's no distinction between these different areas. So the brow bone is very much connected to the nose. It just mushes into one. The nose is very much connected to this inner cheekbone and it just mushes into one and it just looks like one pile of face, if that even makes sense. Whereas if we come over here, we can see a clear definition with the brow. We can see that the nose starts here. We can see that there's a, de there's a distinction between the two. And then as we come down here, we have the nose bone. We can actually see it. There's a distinction. And we've got, I've drawn on this side, because obviously I've drawn that line here and you won't be able to see anything. But we've got a clear line here, okay? There's a clear gap between the nose and the, uh, and the cheekbone and this area here. And it just adds more definition and pop to the face. 
Over here, like I said, it's very, it's, it's like mush. Everything just blends into one. It's not very nice to see. Whereas here, we've got the angles. Look, the way it cuts in. It makes a huge difference, guys. And that is 100% the same, man. Let's move on to the second picture. Okay, so if we move over to this picture here, what we have is David Gandhi, one of the world's most famous and best paid male models, one of the most attractive men in the world, according to a lot of women. He's a very handsome man, you can see it here. And on the left, we have this pretty average guy, really. You'd, you'd look at him and you'd say, perhaps, you know, what I'd notice here is he does actually have high cheekbones. I would suggest that he does have a pretty decent chin, to be fair. I would actually look at this nose and say it's got great potential, great definition, fantastic eyes and brows. Okay, you can see his eyes are obviously a, maybe a blue or a green. It's quite a weird mask, isn't it? He's got um, blue or green eyes that pop, good hairline, you know, ears are tucked in. You can see here, look, decent cheekbone. He's got hollow cheeks and he's got a decent jawline there. Like, you can clearly see that if I take that away, okay? He's got massive potential. You look at the guy on the right, David Gandhi, and you think these two guys are nothing alike. You, if, if you saw these two, you wouldn't think that they were related. Now let's do this. Okay, that's the same guy on the right-hand side. Now, this was the most famous model in the world, okay? The highest paid model in the world, David Gandhi. You could, you could plausibly say that this man was his brother once he lost the body fat. Look at that. You could plausibly say that this man is his brother. That is absolutely crazy to me. That you can go from looking like that to potentially looking like the world's most famous attractive model. Just from losing body fat. Look at that. And one thing I want to show you guys is the difference in the nose. Look at the nose here. Look at the nose here. The same nose, okay? But this one, I know he's smiling, so it's spreading a lot. But the way it connects here, look, you've got the extra padding where it connects. The nose ends up looking bulbous. You can see that here. It ends up looking bulbous. It ends up spreading wider than it should based on, there's nothing wrong with a wide nose, but it ends up spreading wider than it should based on his face type. Okay, so he ends up looking like he's got a, a chubby, bulbous nose. Whereas here, same guy, same nose, clear distinction between the brow and the upper nose. We can even see, for example, here he has these two lines tucking in here, which actually look pretty good. Not great. Here they look fantastic. Look at the definition. Really adds separation to his eyes and nose. See here he's got them. But the difference here between the separation is enormous. Look at that. Then, you know, we're looking at the nose here. It's very bulbous. We come down here. The tip is actually thinner. Okay. This cuts in. And now it creates these lines that go into the side of the face. We can see it on this side. On here, we haven't got that. Everything just kind of connects, like I said, into that mush face zone. And everything looks similar. The definition on the nostrils here is way more defined. Over here they looked padded and, and bulbous. Now, the ba based on the shape of his nose, it's obviously a downward looking nose. The point is down, which is usually the most attractive. But these come out here and they look, they look somewhat unattractive because of the extra padding. Whereas here they could be his best feature. All because he's lost the added body fat. Now, I spoke to you guys earlier about this cheekbone and it comes down here and it's hollow and he's got the jawline. We can clearly see that. Well, over here, we can see it now. And I'll tell you what's crazy is he's got that line here. The line that connects from the brow straight across. This was always a massively attractive guy. But look what he's become now. You can see that line. It comes down here, wraps around his cheekbone, drops down here into the jawline and straight across. And this chin here almost looks, almost looks too big. It looks like it has some added padding. It's got this, you can see here, the fat that comes underneath. And his chin is actually here. So when that's stripped away... Look at the difference. The jawline connects straight into the chin. He's got this clear definition going down here, wrapping around the cheekbone, dropping down. He's got this line connecting from the nose. The nose has more definition. It's just all in all, the body fat has just done his life the world of good. And fair play to this guy. Congratulations, because he looks fantastic. Now, this next image is for a lot of you younger guys who are wondering what you can do here. This is clearly a school kid. And this school kid, you know, he's older now. I can say it. I can't. It's not rude. He has a mush face. That's what it is. Look, this connects 
around here, everything is just, everything is connected. You can see it here. This is just body fat connecting to body fat, connecting to body fat. His neck connects to the chair. Like, everything is just connected together, okay? He's got the padding here, goes around his lips, gives them no definition at all. His chin here is full of padding. His jawline's full of padding. The cheekbones here, if somebody said to me, this guy's cheekbones are low, I'd say, yeah, 100%. Like, he's even smiling and they look low. Okay, you can see here, look. That's not a high cheekbone, okay? High cheekbone would be up around this zone. His cheekbone sits around about, that's the top of it, that's the bottom. It sits around about there. A high cheekbone would be around about there. He has very low cheekbones, okay, naturally. That doesn't change over here. He still has low cheekbones. Look, you can see here. There's the blue patches under his eyes. You can see the line there. His cheekbone is around about there and there. It's basically the same spot, okay? But he looks fantastic because of the low body fat. And yes, it, look, he, he does have the cheekbone line here. It does tuck in. It comes down. It wraps around the chin. It's not exactly top-level male model, but he does have the hollow cheeks here. He does have an extended jawline. You could, sorry, the uh, the wide jaw, and then if you look at his jawline here, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's far superior to this. The difference between those two jawlines, guys, is unbelievable, and this is 100% the same guy. Look at the shape of the ear. It's exactly the same guy. So anybody wondering um, in 2021 what they should do, I 100% think you should put muscle on as much as you can, put on some excess body fat, and then take a longer time to cut that body fat, get it down to below, to around about 10% or below, and, or let's say 12% or below, but 10 and below is fantastic, but retain as much muscle as possible, and I'll do a video on this soon, but you can see the absolute difference that it makes, especially with the nose, look at the nose here, he's got one of those padded noses that I spoke about a minute ago, there's, there's no definition to the nose. This is the nose bone. You wouldn't know it. Okay, that's the nose bone there. You wouldn't know it because it that was actually very well drawn, wasn't it? I didn't actually mean to do it like that. It connects into the rest of the nose and it kind of has a spread effect where it starts going out that way. It's very, very weird when you have excess body fat and the, the nostrils are overly padded so there's no definition. Whereas you look at this guy now, okay, up here, it's connected into one. Down here, You've got the brow, it drops clearly into the nose bone, which is a chiseled nose bone, probably this guy's best feature, maybe along with his lips, which are now way more defined because there's less body fat around them, as you can see here. And then what we have is the clearly defined nostrils, okay? Here it's just padding, it's just mush. The tip is obviously a lot more padded. And if we look here, we can see that the tip is defined to create this very attractive triangle type of shape. And then with the defined nose bone coming out of the brow, it looks fantastic. Again, congratulations to this guy because he went from maybe getting some shit at school, maybe getting bullied to being probably the best looking guy in his school, which is just fantastic. I love stories like that. Okay, and finally, we're going to move on to a guy that a lot of you might recognize. This guy is called Jeff Logan. And I think one thing that you'll all recognize is that, yeah, his traps were a little bit bigger here. That could be sus, I don't know, but it could just be padding. But what he's got here is a very similar muscle size, okay? He's been able to retain, you look at the arm size here. Cross here, I know it's not exact, but it's very similar. Very, very similar in size, okay? His chest looks puffy, you know, it's more defined here. It's fantastic what he's done with his body. He's actually retained as much muscle as possible, and that's allowed him to have size as well as being lean. This is the end goal, okay, guys? To If any fat guys watching, I say fat guys with pride because I think it's actually a benefit. If you naturally kind of look like this without the muscle, well, build the muscle and pack it on with a calorie maintenance. Get up to something around about that total and then start stripping it in the correct manner by doing it in a slow and steady decent progress so you're losing like one percent of body fat per month maybe over like two years and you can end up looking like this whilst retaining all of that muscle but let's take a look at his face something that he's massively famous for okay wow he's done that quick i've just realized he's got the same phone maybe he just prioritizes spending his money on decent things not just technology that's fantastic i didn't realize that but if we look here okay the jawline he's massively famous for his jawline in the current time 
the jawline here is average at best. I, w I would say, in fact, he doesn't really even have a chin. I'm looking at that and thinking there's not really a chin there. The jawline is yeah, it's there, but it's kind of non-existent. You know, it's pretty average, really. You've got the neck. This is, you would see a guy like this on the street probably 50 times a day. And then you look at his neck. There's not really a lot of definition. doesn't really connect in here. You know, where I've spoken to you guys before about the neck exercises. We look at his jaw. We can clearly see he's got a strong jaw, okay? His jaw muscle here is pretty toned. But he's just not showing it as well as he could. Now, his cheekbones, I would say that they're relatively high. You can see you've got this, low, this line here. His cheekbone is clearly positioned around about this area. You can see it. Let me get rid of that. You can see it there. He's got some good, strong bone structure here because we can see definition lines. It could be lighting, but we can clearly see that. But he has got massive elements of a mush face around here. Okay, you can see everything's mushed together. There's no distinct difference between nose, cheek, padding down here, upper cheek, uh, cheekbone. Around here by the chin, the side of the mouth, there's always a lot of pad in here which can make your mouth look a lot more protruded, or your lips at least, and give you a huge amount of definition. His forehead and brow looks pretty flat. The way it connects into his nose, I think this is probably his worst feature. Maybe along with, see I have this at the moment as well. You see the way he has these lines underneath here, makes you look tired, makes you look knackered. Maybe he was working hard like I am. But when you get padding, you get extra body fat, you end up having these blue lines, everything looks padded under here. It just makes you look sleepy and unhealthy. I have that exact same thing right now, around about 20% body fat. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm as big as him muscularity wise, but I've definitely got similar level of body fat. You know, I'm what's 260? 260 is a lot, isn't it? That's very, very heavy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's about maybe 20 pounds heavier than I am. 25, maybe 25 pounds heavier than I am probably right now. Um, maybe a little bit more actually. But you can see the nose here. I think his nose here is his worst feature. Look how padded that is. It looks, looks like when you have flu and you've blown it too many times and it gets padded. It goes all red and shiny and doesn't look very good. It's, there's extra padding to it. I think there's a spot there. Like, it just doesn't look very good when you've got that extra body fat, okay? But let's move over now to this other picture. And, you know, I'm a straight guy, but look at this guy. He looks unbelievable. Fantastic. Look at that jawline. Unbelievable. And it connects into this chin. And I told you guys before, this chin wasn't very good. Look, it just kind of mushes around. You can see, I, I know, like I said, I'm using a, a thicker line. But you can clearly see it's angular. It goes in straight lines. This kind of all mushes around together. But there's a huge difference. Up here, he's always been pretty strong. But it's here, on this point. You can see it cuts in a lot more because his neck is obviously more toned. Or, sorry, has less body fat. And then under here is the big difference. It almost, I don't think his jawlines come forward too much. I just think that this, he, he does do jaw exercises, jawline exercises, and neck exercises, which is great. But I definitely think that this low body fat has made a major difference here. Because he's always had something. I think, if anything, the jawline exercises have improved his chin. But other than that, I think this jawline was kind of already there. Maybe it's come out a little bit more. But I think that's more an illusion from the neck being further back. If we look here, he's clearly got a solid cheekbone into jawline curve. A few men have that. He had it here, see? But we couldn't see it because of the extra padding. He's got hollow cheeks here. We can see it again. One of the rarest features a man can have. It makes you look unbelievable. And his nose, gone from his worst feature to one of his best. Probably besides his jawline, is probably his second best feature. Look at that, very flat, very solid jaw, um, sorry, very solid nose bone. And then we can clearly see he doesn't have this mush zone here. And he has definition in the nostrils as it goes outwards. That looks so much better than here where the nose is almost connected to the inner cheek. And I think this might be one of the worst features when you put on body fat is when your nose gets wide and it connects to... Like I said, there's nothing wrong with the wide nose. It's just the way that it spreads more than it needs to by this, la this layer of body fat connecting to this layer of body fat. And it just makes it look terrible. His brow here is pretty flat. Not bad. Here you can see he has clear definition straight across the brow. It makes it look so much better. And his cheekbone here hasn't changed, okay? Relatively the same. But it look and you can see the lines, the bags under his eyes. Look so much better here. Just take a look at that area there. It looks so much better. It looks like it's higher and it looks like it dips in there. Whereas here it looks lower because of the extra padding. And then it comes outwards. See, if that had no padding... 
and then came in, it would give an angular appearance, but it doesn't. But over here it does. It's pretty much the same position. It hasn't really changed much at all. And it's improved his eyes. It does something to your eyes too when you lose body fat. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the extra angles around this sort of zone that will make you look better. But it gives your eyes an extra pop. That guy that looked like David Gandhi, he had the same thing. He had great eyes. Light blue, greeny eyes. You know, very rare. He wasn't showing them off as much as he could. When he lost all that body fat, they looked wider, almost cat-like. And it took him to another level. And that's all I wanted to show you guys. It's something that I'm starting on Sunday. I'm going to start dropping my body fat. So hopefully I will retain the majority of my muscle. I probably want to... I don't want to go much below 200 pounds, 205 pounds. So I'm going to kind of do it very, very slowly. Uh, I wouldn't mind being a little bit heavier, to be honest. But I'm going to do it very, very slowly. I might do it over a year or two. I'm not worried about this summer. I'm more worried about next summer. I'm making a video on this soon and why that's so important. I think more guys should have that long-term aim. And it'll be nice to document everything. So thus far with the fitness journey, if anybody's been missing it, I know I only did like three episodes or four. But what I didn't want to do is just repetitive work because it was taking up a lot of my time. I was just doing the same sort of thing all day, every day, just filming the fitness, editing it, and there wasn't much change to my training. I was doing similar things because obviously we're on lockdown and I'm in a home gym. There's not is there's not a whole gym's worth of equipment and you know, until I actually hire a camera and a camera operator, somebody who can work with me on a daily basis, it's very hard to go out in the field and do, you know, variations of things like sprints and whatever. Otherwise, I'm just filming myself on a tripod. I don't think it looks too good. I'd rather wait to do those sort of things. But on Sunday, I'm going to show you what I look like at the end of my bulk. And I'm going to structure out my plan, which Steve is helping me with. Steve Walker, who's been on the uh, podcast a few times and on this channel doing fitness videos. I'm going to keep my calories pretty high. I'm only going to drop them by about 100. I might do maintenance for a, for a week or two just to level my body out and get my body used to it. And then I might drop my calories by 100. I might cut the excess body fat. And I'll do it slowly over a long period of time. And what I'll do is my main aim is to re retain the muscle. Because I've been in this scenario before. And I looked like this. But trying to get to this. What I did is too much cardio. And I didn't retain the muscle by lifting the weights. And I ended up just not getting skinny fat. Just getting skinny. But I wasn't as lean as this because I didn't have the muscle. So it just didn't look good. So this time I'm going to do it right. I'm going to document it because I think dropping body fat is a much more progression. It's, much, it's easier to notice the progression of dropping body fat. You know, and I can go on. I can go and do various things. Whereas when you're bulking, it is very much just repetitive lifting heavy weights. So it's going to be mixed up. And I hopefully, guys, I get similar results to this guy. Because I want to be a shining light to you lot. I want to be somebody who you look at and go, wow, I want to look like him. You know, because Jeff releases his supplements and people go, I've got to buy them because I want to look like Jeff. Whereas if you'd saw this guy, you wouldn't have bought his supplements, you wouldn't have really followed his channel. I feel like for personal growth of the channel, for authenticity, this is what ideally the owner of first man needs to look like okay but in order to look like this you need to first look like this and then make the transformation so i'm going to try and bring all that together be a shining light for you guys hopefully it adds some inspiration some motivation along the way to do things slower to achieve your own fitness journey and show that by bulking first by adding the extra muscle and then cutting it after but retaining the muscle you can have your perfect body and you can see that i'm authentic and not full of shit and um, when all that comes together, it'll be fantastic. And I'm going to document it. So thank you as always for watching, guys. And I'll speak to you all soon. If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio.